Do I dare? Do I dare drive the 90s JDM box? There's one main reason I never drive this car, especially after our Vegas trip. But let's get her fired up. Cold start for the boys. This is a cold, cold, real cold start as well. Oh, oh man, still smells like it. It is the 90s JDM box. Come on, girl. Ooh. Look at that, no smoke, no nothing. No nothing. So this car is my 91 Acura NSX. I bought this thing, I don't even know, like six months ago. The day after I bought it, Bobby and I, my, my beautiful girlfriend and I took it on this extravagant road trip down to Vegas, down to Southern California. We put a bunch of miles on it and uh, it's been sitting ever since because it's winter and the heater don't work. You don't need a heater in Vegas. You don't need a heater in California. But in Spokane, you do need a heater because today it is a whopping, that's not bad. 37 degrees out right now. Now here's the ticket. If I let this car warm up enough, the heat from the engine transfers into the cabin because of course the motor's in the back of the car. So there's not, I feel like it's not as much of a firewall. So the heat will transfer over to the cabin and then that'll keep you warm. So if we let it warm up for about 15, 20 minutes maybe, we'll be good to go. I'm excited, man. This is one of the cars that never, never gets driven. Four hours later. Mmm, an oil leak. That's new. Nice. Now, I wasn't planning on driving such a specimen of a vehicle today. So, of course, I didn't bring my beautiful windshield mount. So, no rippers in the NSX today, but uh, that's okay. Let's make a nice, quick cruise to the shop and see about doing a first drive on the Evo 8 today. How freaking exciting is that? I have a really bad habit of doing this. Putting car parts in the cars. I need to get this me out of here. This is another OEM wing for the car. And uh, the one on it, it's missing the third brake light and it was cheaper to buy a whole wing with the brake light instead of just the brake light. That's JDM stuff for you. But honestly, I might just get rid of that wing and of course, an NSX R wing would be a much more proper fit. Hell yeah. Come on, go away. All right, we got a couple new squeaks, a new oil leak. Another reason I don't really drive this car is it is in desperate need of maintenance. Maintenance including a whole timing belt kit. I have it at the shop, I need to do it. Whether or not I'm gonna keep this motor in the car or not, it doesn't really matter. This timing belt needs to be done. One of these days it's probably just gonna snap and take out her. Uh, what freaking motor's in this thing? Not a J series. What is it? Now that's gonna piss me off. C, C30 <clears throat> is what's in this guy. So I need to get the car on the lift. The problem with that is I did a touch of research and it appears majority of people pull the engine to do the timing belt kit. And if I'm gonna pull the motor, I'm not so sure I want to put the C30 back in it. And the automatic back in it as well. Who knows? Who freaking knows, man? Too many projects, not enough time, not enough money, not enough patience. Just a whole lot of ideas. That's what my life is right now. Anti-lock brake light just came on. Heck yes. 
and the red light on the bottom of the cluster that is for the missing third brake light now that right there my friends that is some I definitely have lotion all over my face that is some technology cars nowadays don't even tell you what light is missing but this one does do I dare do a poll for the boys <laughs> ah morning get out of its own way Check engine light just came on. Oh man. So today we we started off with the oil leak. ABS light came on, which it has never came on before. Mid pull, check engine light comes on. She's in need of, in need of some maintenance, my friends. The package I've been waiting on to finally finish up the engine bay and the fuel system arrived. Big shout out to my guys over at Radium. They were out of stock on these regulators for a while, but they got them back in stock a day later. We have everything needed right here. So this is the regulator. Very excited for this. This is called a DMR or a direct mount regulator and from what I understand, Radium is the only company that offers a direct mount regulator. So this guy is gonna go right on the fuel rail. A direct mount meaning directly mounted onto the fuel rail. So let's see what we need here. This side is gonna go to the rail, and then it's gonna go regulator, and then out the bottom is gonna be the return line. And check this out, how you adjust the fuel pressure is this nice little dial right here. How handy is this? Okay, so the regulator is completely set up, ready to be installed. All fittings are on the regulator. Now everything is labeled. Low pressure return out, high pressure from rail, vacuum reference and of course how you adjust the fuel pressure so let's pull off this adapter that we have on here which is an eight to six an adapter and this is getting replaced with this i just love the thought and uh i guess ingenuity you could say that goes into the radium parts so hard to beat them so hard to beat them so that's gonna sit like that the super nice thing is you can see when the fitting's tight, there are swivel fittings, so you can still move it to wherever you need. Right there should be good. I don't know what you guys use for vacuum line, but that thin, you know, easy to tear, thin wall stuff really, really sucks. I finally found some I think is gonna be very good. Surprisingly enough, I got this on Amazon. Whole roll of quarter inch, 10 feet, 10 bucks. So it's a dollar a foot and it's super thick. And it's made by a company called Evil Energy. I've tried their AN fittings before. I haven't really had the best luck, but this stuff, man, this stuff seems like it's gonna be the ticket. Now, another cool thing they make is this little setup. So this is an AAN adapter for a quarter inch NPT. And a quarter inch NPT happens to be a fuel pressure gauge. So this is gonna go in line on the feed side of the rail. And now we have a proper place to mount our gauge. That is pretty slick. So here's the final setup with all of the radium parts. We have the radium adapter line kit going into the gauge. Radium rail comes out the other side into the direct mount regulator and then back to the line down there. The bay is 99% complete. The only thing missing are the valve cover and hoses, and we just need one more adapter for the driver's side. Well, let's fire this thing up, dial back our fuel pressure before it was like at 60 PSI, which is way too high. So dial that back. That should clean up some AFRs, and yeah, go from there. Just making sure we ain't got no fuel leaks right off the bat. Should be good.
This thing is ready to go on its first drive. Now, unfortunately, it is uh, not looking so promising out in the wilderness out here. It's raining pretty good. Now, later on, I'm not so sure if I'm gonna be this strict on not driving it in the rain, but for a first drive, when we really, really need to be diligent about coolant leak or water leaks, oil leaks, any sort of leaks on the car and the whole underside is wet, it's gonna, be make, it's gonna make it impossible to see if we do have any leaks or not. And let's be honest, it's a freaking brand new, fresh build. There probably is gonna be leaks here and there. And not to mention, this thing is absolutely mint right now. And to just take it out on a first drive while it's all rainy outside and there's puddles everywhere, probably isn't the best idea. So let's hope and let's pray. It clears up, the sun comes out, it dries out the road. In the meantime, we need to go ahead and build and customize two things, two things, all right? First up is our battery setup. So currently we have half of the battery strap built. We need to go pick up some steel and finish building that. That needs to be painted or powder coated and we need to get that fully secured. The second thing is the license plate bulb bracket, which is this guy right here. We need to finish this up so this can be mounted on the car. Both of those should take probably an hour. So if the weather don't clear up in an hour, I don't know what we're gonna do. I'm supposed to get the glass installed on this thing tonight, the rear glass and the windshield, and I really wanna get that done. So my pretty snazzy battery Holder, battery tie down, battery bracket is all finished up. So this is the length of it, of course. This will prevent it from sliding forward or back. And then I wanted something on the sides as well to prevent any sort of sliding from left to right. And if we take a look at it on the battery, bam, there she be. Okay, up next is our little license plate bulb holder. First up, we need two pieces of straight steel to go from here to here. Create a little backing for the plate. So let's say four and three quarter. Something like that. We'll do the trick. Now we need to do some welding. We need to weld our pieces of stick to our license plate light holder. And now here's what we can do. Take our plate, mark exactly where that lower hole is. This will all make sense here in a sec. All right, so mark those. Pop in some holes. Both the battery tie down and our license plate bulb holder, both are finished up. Just gave them a quick sandblast. Let's get them powder coated and we can get them on the car. You guys wanna know the secret in the ticket to life and to not very good fab work? Splatter black powder coat. Hides all your imperfections. You see what I mean when I say splatter black hides all the imperfections? It looks like I went on the internet and bought this from like a very high-end reputable company. Highly recommend. Now, let's use it. And finally, get our battery done. So the battery is gonna sit like that. This guy is gonna sit like that. And the cool part about this whole thing is this sits below where the wood is going to sit, which is pretty sweet. So it truly will be hidden and you will not be able to tell that there's a battery back here, which was the end goal. Now the not fun part, we need to drill and riv nut our floor pan. So I have this long nose marker, marking it right in the center of our holes. Okay. I'm gonna start off with a relatively small drill bit. Drill a pilot hole. Okay. 
Now I'm going to step it up to a drill bit big enough for our M6 riv nut. Now let's toss our riv nuts into the pan. And then just so our battery is not sitting right on the metal of the, the floor pan or the trunk pan, not sure if that matters or not, but I am just going to grab this rubber strips, uh, this rubber insulator strip, double sided taped and put it around the perimeter of this battery. Something like that ought to do the trick. Let's see how it all works. Well, if that falls off, the whole freaking trunk pan's coming out. Look at that, man. Still lower than the trunk pan height. As soon as I get around to getting the wood in here, it'll be done. Hidden, out of the way. Too freaking clean, man. Too freaking clean. Moving on to this guy. So let's get these screwed in place. Don't judge my welds. Welding this thick, like quarter inch steel to that millimeter thick steel was, was a bit tricky. So this piece is all finished up. Now we need to figure out the wiring. Being that factory, Evo 8 has the side markers on the rear bumper, which are ugly. We don't want those. We need to start cutting some of this wiring off and clean up this harness. Let's see here, boys. What do we got to do? So we don't need this. And we don't need this. Give her a quick little wipe down. Tape off the wiring that we cut. So it's not just chilling, exposed. We don't want that. Harness is trimmed down and complete. That plugs in there. That plugs in there. Now let's slap her on the car. Well friends, there it is. Let's temporarily plug in, turn on the lights and make sure our wiring harness Still works good. Looks like only one of our bulbs is working, but then again, it's just a stock bummy OEM bulb and it needs to be replaced with some LEDs. There we go. Well, boys, it's still raining. We're still getting rained out. It's hours and hours later. And even though we didn't get a first drive today, <clears throat> Still a good day. When it comes to like fabricating little things and modifying little things, I always do enjoy that kind of stuff. And the car is 100% ready to hit the streets. We just need not downpour of rain. Appointment for the glass got moved to tomorrow. So whether or not it rains, it doesn't really matter. Worst case scenario, I'm gonna drive the truck and I'll toss the Evo in the enclosed trailer. Trailer to the glass shop, which is probably what I should do anyway. I don't think it's all that legal to drive with no windshield. Maybe it is, I don't really know. Maybe if I put some goggles on or something, we'd be in the clear. But I'll see how I feel tomorrow, see if it rains tomorrow, and if I'm feeling ballsy enough to just hop in it and cruise a couple miles to the, to the glass shop, we'll do that. But. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you want some splatter black powder to hide your imperfections in your fabrication, like I do with mine, I'll link it down below. Oh, and this car fixed itself. Check engine light and the ABS light both went off.
so that's handy. Still slow, it's still an automatic, but it's still an NSX. Good night.